Hey Shagheads, welcome to the latest adventure of a Shaggy Duck Life. I'm Curtis Tucker, aka Shags, living the American dream here in small town Enid, Oklahoma. Follow along as I entrepreneur from home and show you what life is like in the Midwest America. Enjoy my everyday stories about family, my hometown, making money online, growing a lifestyle brand, creating content, anything 70s, and much, much more. So uh, this is an episode that I've been wanting to do ever since football season. It's going to be about my daughter's and uh, college life. So right now you may see a little bit, if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, that's youtube.com, uh, Curtis Tucker TV, you may see some light reflecting off my face. That's because the March Madness is on and I've got the Arkansas game on. Uh, and if you've kept up with college sports at all, you may know that uh, Oklahoma State uh, did not get to participate in post uh, seasonal activities in basketball, and OU did not make the big dance there the, in the NIT, and Arkansas is the only one out of the three that made the big dance, and they are a four seed, but they're having a little trouble with uh, Vermont at the moment. But um, So this episode is titled, Woo Pig Sooners Cowboy. And it's going to kind of explain how I went from being an Oklahoma State Cowboy fan to a Sooner and a Razorback fan. Don't forget, I do have the new Shags uh, stickers out. If you're looking on the YouTube channel, you can see the sticker there. If you're not, uh, I do have it posted uh, on the CurtisTucker.com website in some different places. But uh, just, I did get my email. I did make up an email. Uh, shags at shaggyduck.com so you guys can email me there. If you'll just email me your address, I will send you out one of these great window stickers for your car or your office or whatever. So uh, email me there. I do apologize. I believe it was either the last, I don't know if it was, a, it was the prior episode, not last week's, but the week before episode where I talked about uh, buying the same house twice and I was going to add some video and photos uh, to the uh, YouTube video and unfortunately I uh, just haven't had enough time to do that and what I found out it would take me probably twice as long just to get all that stuff added to the video as it did to actually just do the podcast and so but I will create a page at curtistucker.com embed that podcast episode, have a little bit of text, and then I will have some video and photos, uh, and then I'll just mention that on an upcoming episode to let you guys know that's there. So, um, uh, and then I've got an upcoming episode as well where I want to talk about how, you know, I want this podcast to be about stories, just about what life is like in Oklahoma by a guy that's just like you, everybody out there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not a celebrity, I'm nobody special, but I just want to connect with people. And I think it would be cool for people all over the world and different parts of the country to connect with me. You guys email me at Curtis, or uh, shags at shaggyduck.com. Tell me what you guys are up to. I would love to have different people, characters on the show, give you guys updates, um, just bounce ideas off of everybody. I don't want this podcast to necessarily just be about me, but what I'm trying to do is give you guys just a different perspective of what goes on uh, in different parts of the world. Uh, me and my buddy Todd doing the 70s Buzz podcast, we have become really great friends with uh, several of our most loyal listeners, and I would love to do that on this podcast as well. And maybe some of you that listen to uh, me over on the 70s Buzz podcast, uh, we can connect here as well. But uh, would just love to have a, a, a really cool uh, group of people that uh, we can keep up with. And, uh, you know, so not only am I going to give you stories about me and my family and my business, but, you know, uh, I'm not going to say his name because he's right under my feet, but my pooch down there, um, there will be some upcoming episodes on what it's like to have, you know, a puppy and all that good stuff. And I am going to glance over every now and then and check the score. It is uh, Arkansas 61. Vermont is 56. We've got 622 left to go in the game. So the question is, 
Uh, any, and then as part of that prior that I just said, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you guys have been downloading uh, the podcast. Uh, my stats show me uh, the downloads. And just thank you for taking the time to listen to my podcast. And uh, please give me ideas. Give me feedback. If I'm boring you to the death, let me know. Uh, what I want to try to do is bring out more stories. Uh, I'm going to start some, hopefully, some really fun episodes that I'm going to keep track of. And uh, just, just, just want to connect with people. I just want this podcast to be about connecting with people. And so, um, so I've got our youngest daughter uh, went to Arkansas. And one night we were in Arkansas for one of the football games, and a really great hotel over there called the Graduate. And they're they're building more graduates on campuses of some of the bigger universities, and then they theme the whole hotel kind of towards whatever campus they're on. And anyway, we met a guy down in the lobby and uh, he was there on his own and wasn't having a really good time because he wasn't able to connect with his kids on campus, uh, was divorced. And so we got to talking anyway and, uh, you know, got to enjoying his stories. And then I got to telling him our story about why we were there and um, you know how our uh, year was going following football and he seemed really interested and thought it was really cool our story so I thought well maybe that would make a really cool episode on a shaggy duck life so so growing up I for one reason or another was an Oklahoma State fan and so so in Oklahoma football is pretty big uh, at the at the high school level and the college level and because Oklahoma has never had a professional football team a lot of people in the state consider the Oklahoma Sooners equivalent to our professional football team and they have won enough and have a good enough reputation they're almost like a professional football team but the underdog and the smaller university in the state is Oklahoma State and it is in Stillwater OU is in Norman Norman is just on the outskirts of Oklahoma City so it's more of a big metropolitan area whereas Stillwater is a really small town out in the middle of nowhere all by itself and, and it's, it's the closest university to Enid, Oklahoma. So a lot of the high school graduates in Enid, Oklahoma will go to college over at Oklahoma State because uh, tuition seems to be a little lower. Um, it's closer, you get in-state tuition. Um, you're gonna meet a lot of friends over there, have roommates because a lot of people are going over there. So throughout my college career, I did eventually end up uh, at Oklahoma State uh, for a year, but even prior to going to there, I was more of an Oklahoma State fan than an Oklahoma fan, not for any particular reason at the time. Wasn't hugely into college football in high school or early college, um, and so I, I just ended up being an Oklahoma State fan. And so when I did go to Oklahoma State, I did end up on a work-study program where I got a job at the university, and my job just happened to be working at the uh, stadium and so I was there when Jimmy Johnson was the coach there. Rusty Hilger was the uh, quarterback. Um, Ernest Anderson was the running back but uh, in the in the in the wings were um, Thurman Thomas and Barry Sanders and uh, one of the assistant coaches was um, um, uh, Jones, Jones, Jones. Um, he went on to become uh, later Oklahoma State uh, coach and then uh, I think Miami coach. Anyway, those guys um, never were able to lead Oklahoma State to uh, really great seasons. They never really ever beat um, Oklahoma. Uh, after they left Oklahoma State, of course, Jimmy Johnson, they went on to have great careers at Miami and Dallas and, and things like that. But uh, so the, the rivalry, one of the longest rivalries in football college football is Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and it's called Bedlam. And when those two get, get together, really no matter who is ranked higher or, or you know, um, is supposed to win the game, it usually doesn't matter. Uh, a lot of times, you know, it's closer than it's supposed to be or the team that wasn't supposed to win will win. But uh, it's a, and I don't, I don't have the number in my head, but it's a very, very lopsided rivalry where um, Oklahoma has won almost 
every game. And so that, again, gives a little more of that Cinderella story to the Oklahoma State fans. And so being an Oklahoma State fan, we don't take our football quite as seriously as the Oklahoma Sooners do um, because they've got bragging rights. They've got national champions. They've got way more Heisman Trophy winners, uh, a lot more uh, conference titles, uh, just just a you know a lot more history there again they're almost like our the uh, professional football team in Oklahoma uh, Oklahoma State you know we kind of know that we're probably not going to win the national title uh, every year and and so if we have a, a decent season we're pretty happy with that you know we do um, we do win national championships in basketball and wrestling and baseball and um, you know, ten, or golf and, and just, you know, other, other sports. And I think, um, I think Oklahoma State may have the most national championships if you add all the sports together of any other college. So we do at Oklahoma State have some bragging rights. But anyway, so growing up, it was always either you were an Oklahoma State fan, pretty much 99% of all people were either an Oklahoma State fan or an Oklahoma fan. Uh, and if you were a fan of one, you kind of hated the other one. And so not that I hated OU, but I just, I would never root for them even when they weren't playing Oklahoma State because you didn't want them to win another national title and be Oklahoma State and not ever be able to say that you were even competing for one. So, so I grew up, um, you know, got out of college uh, as an adult, was still always an Oklahoma State fan. Uh, now, interesting thing that happened was, you know, when I met my wife and married her, she actually went to OU and is an OU graduate. And so we were what we call a house divided. She would root for OU and I would root for OSU. And so that went on for years and years and years. And then uh, we had our two daughters. And as our daughters got older and got into middle school, they became dancers, competitive dancers. And so lucky for us, they both loved to competitive dance. So we were always at the same competitions. They were always in the same uh, dance groups, the same dance studio and all that. So it was a really great existence uh, being a parent of two kids that did the exact same thing at the exact same time. And they were only 17 months apart. And so, uh, so, so it was really easy. So anyway, competitive dancing a lot of time leads to uh, girls being on the high school palm team. Now, the difference between a palm team and a cheerleading squad is the cheerleaders do more cheers and um, gymnastics. They're, they do more flips and pyramids and stacking and things like that, whereas the palm team, they dance. They, they uh, choreograph uh, each other and, and all dance together, uh, you know, like a dance team. And so that's kind of the difference. And so dancers usually become palm on the palm squad and so both of my daughters were on the Enid High palm squad and so when we would go uh, we would take them over to Oklahoma State because uh, one of the cool things about Oklahoma State is they have the largest homecoming celebration of any college uh, in the country and I mean it's just huge and what they have is they this thing called the walkabout and it's the night before the homecoming game, but all, the, all of the fraternities and sororities create these huge displays, I mean huge, and they have a competition to see who can win, but you know, uh, 30,000 people or more will all get together and circle the fraternities and sororities looking at all these displays, and there's food and music and, and just all kinds of fun stuff. So we would take them over there, and so had you asked me at the time, I would have told you that my oldest daughter, was probably going to go to OSU and my youngest daughter was probably going to go to OU and just the fact that my oldest daughter kind of seemed to like OSU that was grounds for my youngest daughter you know obviously not wanting to go where her older sister was and and liking OU a little bit more but what happened as as they got towards the end of their high school career they began looking into uh, their palm, collegiate palm, a little more and found out that um, not only do the girls palm, so, so the big thing to do is to go to college and palm for football, but then they also palm for boys and girls basketball 
And then some colleges, uh, the girls' palm for even more sports. And then on top of that, some college palm teams actually compete and they'll go to like Disney World and have national competitions against other palm teams. And so come to find out Oklahoma State is not a competitive palm team and um, and so their palming reputation was not as good as OU's palm and palm at OU, they, they are more of a competitive team. And so my and because my wife had gone to OU, I think she had some influence in trying to get my oldest daughter to enroll at OU. So my oldest daughter went down to OU, toured, uh, and I believe that was the only school that she toured. I can't, I can't remember taking her to another school. I don't think she ever toured OSU, but she tried out for OU Palm. And uh, fortunately, she made OU Palm, so she went, so she enrolled and went to school at OU. Then my, so I went through that first full year of her being uh, at OU. Now it was a weird year because it was the first year of COVID and all collegiate sports were a little weird. The, the crowds were smaller. You had to social distance, you had to wear a mask. It just wasn't like a regular season. The girls on the palming could not get on the field. They had to wear masks while they were palming. They, have to, they had to stand at the end of the end zone on this wall. Um, it, was just a, it was just a whole mess. Um, and so because of that, and because even some games were canceled with some schools and things like that, um, the whole football season of her first year of palming just was not that great. And so it did not enable me to really get into the whole OU football scene, although I was going to the OU football games because she was palming. My, and I'd gone to OU football games a lot because of my wife, um, but I always usually just sat there and, you know, didn't, didn't get that into the game. Um, and so we've got Arkansas here on uh, television, 71 to 65 over Vermont, a minute 35 remaining. I think they're going to win. It looks like that anyway. And so anyway, so, so you kind of have to cancel out the first year of uh, my daughter going to OU as far as me getting enthusiastic about the uh, Oklahoma Sooners. So then my, our youngest daughter graduates and she's trying to decide where to go to school. Well, number one, she does not want to go to Oklahoma State because uh, non-competitive Palm, a lot of her friends were going there. She wanted to get out of state. She just wanted to go do something on her own. And she also did not want to go to OU and again, follow in her sister's footsteps, which, you know, because of them being the same dance studio, you know, each year, her sister was older, so she was always, you know, one of the better dancers and, you know, in the middle. And, and so, you know, until she finally left the studio, did my youngest daughter get to be the center and, and in the middle of a lot of the dances. So she didn't want to, you know, go through that. And so she had looked, uh, she started looking at SEC schools and was interested in LSU because they had a really great Palm team, but we basically said, look, you're not going to LSU. We're not driving to Louisiana just to see you in college, so um, you need to reconsider. And then she got interested and she started looking at Arkansas. I had never considered Arkansas to go to school, for them to go to school, to watch their sports. It just, Arkansas was not even on my radar. And so she got to looking at Arkansas and found out that they had a, a pretty good, a really good palm team. And not only did they palm for football, boys and girls basketball, they also palm for baseball. And Arkansas has a darn good baseball team and really cool baseball palm outfits for the girls. And so, and it's just barely, barely over the Oklahoma border. And they offer almost in-state tuition for Oklahoma residents, I think they just tack on 10% if you're from Oklahoma, and it's only a three and a half hour drive from Enid, Oklahoma to Fayetteville. 
And so she became interested in Arkansas and we kind of looked at it and thought, well, you know, that's not that bad. And so um, we let her do it all and she she signed up and, and did all the things that she needed to do and send in the videos. And we drove her over there one weekend so she could try out for the Arkansas Palm Team all on her own, went in all by herself, didn't know anybody there, didn't have any connections, went in, razzled and dazzled them, and she ended up making the Arkansas Palm Team. And so uh, a weekend or two later, we had to take her back to Arkansas to give her a tour of the school. We hadn't even toured the school at that point. And during that time, we had mentioned that, hey, why don't you go ahead and try out for the OU Palm team because if you don't make the Arkansas Palm team, don't go to Arkansas, just go to OU and try to make the OU Palm team. And there's really no sense in going to Arkansas if you're not going to be on the Palm team. And so she she actually kind of agreed to that and said, okay, if I don't make the Arkansas Palm team, I, I'll just go to OU. And so, but at the last minute, she decided to take her chances. She didn't know if she had made the Arkansas Palm Team yet, and in between the time that she tried out and when the results were going to be announced was when the OU Palm tryouts were, and she just decided um, that she, I think she had enough confidence that she was going to make it. She just said, look, uh, and then she decided, um, if I try out for OU Palm and I make it, she goes, I still don't want to go to OU. So I don't know if she didn't make Arkansas Palm. I'm not sure what we were going to do, but I think we were going to pretty much force her to probably have to go to OU. But So anyway, at the last minute, she decided she was not going to try out for OU Palm, which I think, I honestly think she probably would have made it. Um, but she didn't, and so again, she did make the Arkansas Palm. So, so, so we get them enrolled, we get them over to college, and then the football season starts, and we look at the schedules. And so by that time, looking at the schedules, you know, there was, there was only maybe, maybe two weekends out of the whole football season where neither team either had a game or they were both at away games. But every, almost every weekend, one of them was at home. And so, so what we did was we kind of looked at, at what was going on and, and also had to consider what was going on with sorority life. And if there was a sorority function going on, we needed to be on that campus on that weekend. And so basically what it almost turned out to be was every other weekend. So I think the first weekend we were at OU, the next weekend we were at Arkansas, and then it just basically almost went back and forth. There might have been a couple times where we were at Arkansas two weekends in a row, but then we were at OU two weekends in a row. And uh, so so basically that's what we did. We, we basically would drive from Enid and either go to an Arkansas football game on the weekend and, and usually that entailed staying two nights or we would go to Norman and stay two nights and, and watch an OU football game. And at the beginning of the season, and so at the beginning of the season, they tell you the dates and who they're playing, but they don't really announce the times. And I made this comment because one time when my wife and I were dating, during the spring game, OU and OSU had their spring games on the same day. And I said, hey, why don't we drive to Stillwater? Because their spring game was in the morning and OU's was in the afternoon. I said, why don't we drive to Stillwater and watch the OSU spring game and then drive to Norman and watch the OU spring game, which we did. And so that idea had sparked an idea that I said, hey, if the times come out and there's an OU or an Arkansas game in the morning, and then the other school has a game in the evening, we ought to try to make both games. Well, it just so happened that, I don't know, a little bit past halfway in the season, there was a Saturday where Arkansas played at 11 and OU played at 6. So we went to the Arkansas game in the morning and stayed until really... I think maybe five minutes left in the game. Um, and so we got up and we left. And, he, you know, by the time we left the stadium and walked across campus and got in our car, the game was over. And so we were heading out of town, out of Fayetteville, 
as the game was over and we drove, so it's three and a half hours also from Fayetteville to Norman, and so we drove the three and a half hours to Norman and just lucked into coming into town. We kind of went a back way, came into town and just happened to see this guy uh, that had some parking in his front yard on his grass. And so we pulled in there, got a parking space, which was about, I don't know, four or five blocks from the stadium, hopped out, and we actually made it into the stadium, into our seats before kickoff for the OU game. And so that day, we, so the night, the, the Friday night, we spent the night in Fayetteville, watched the Arkansas game, drove to Norman, watched the OU game, and then spent the night in Norman that night and then headed back to Enid, I believe, on, you know, on the next Sunday. Um, and so, so, so basically, it, was, it became a fun year. Um, and what I learned was you don't necessarily have to be just a fan of one college. Um, so at OU, it was the year of having Spencer Rattler, and Spencer Rattler was basically a given to have a great season and win the Heisman Trophy. And OU was, you know, predicted to, you know, compete for the national title. And then Arkansas, nobody knew what was going to happen with Arkansas, but, you know, they everybody just thought they were going to have a regular season. Well, as it turned out, Arkansas had a phenomenal season and beat way more people than they were supposed to. And so it was a great season. And so they're in the, at currently, or that year, they were in the SEC, which is a really competitive, uh, uh, you know, football um, ah, conference and um, did really well. So, so it was fun being able to see the Auburns and the Mississippi States and a lot of the schools that we had never seen before because we've always seen the Big 12 schools. And so, so I became an Arkansas, we became Arkansas fans. Um, you know, we would go down, they've got uh, where the team walks up to the stadium before every game and people line up and the band plays and the palm cheers and there's uh, tailgating going on. We did the whole thing and we were there for, every time we were in town for a game, we went uh, to that and, and just fell in love with the players, uh, the coach, the stadium, the town. Um, the restaurants. So we are huge Arkansas fans. The thing about Arkansas fans are uh, we're Razorback fans and the the call or the the slogan or whatever you want to say is Woo Pig Suey. And so, and hang on, um, rats. It is uh, Arkansas 73, Vermont 71 with 12 seconds left. Did he get fouled? Is he going to get a shot? Oh no, he may have gotten fouled and may get a shot. <sighs> Come on, Arkansas. Uh, so I apologize. If you are not a sports fan, uh, this is probably boring you to death, but uh, hopefully it's fun enough uh, because it's about our daughters that uh, you're, you're still hanging with me. So anyway, so, uh, so we quickly became Arkansas fans. Love Arkansas. Uh, if you've watched any of the basketball, you'll know that the basketball team has done way better than what people predicted. The baseball team is going to be one of the best in the country. Um, the track team, I think, just won national title. I mean, it's just athletic-wise, uh, we got into Arkansas in the right time. And so I've become a huge um, Arkansas fan, and, and they do this cheer where they go, woo, and you put your hands up, and woo, wiggle your fingers, pig suey and the whole crowd, and they do it in restaurants, and so, so we've become, uh, you know, uh, diehard Razorback fans. And then going back over to the OU side, um, you know, o OU was winning and um, cruising along, but they weren't winning in the OU style. And the OU style is by winning by, you know, 21 or more points every game. Well, they were just like maybe winning by three points. And Spencer wasn't looking like a Heisman Trophy winner. And everybody was kind of scratching their heads, wondering what was going on. And then there was the Texas game, which I did not go to. My wife and my daughter were at the Texas game. I did not go to, but OU was losing drastically and, and miserably in the Texas game. And so they pulled 
Spencer Rattler and put um, Caleb Williams in, and that's when that whole thing started. Uh, and Lincoln Riley was the coach. And um, hang on, I'm watching Arkansas. Ten seconds. Uh oh. I think Vermont got the ball back. You got to be kidding me. Uh, this is live basketball right here on my podcast, people. Uh, yeah, they did. They stole the ball and didn't call a foul on them. I can't believe it. So there's nine seconds left. It's 73-71. Vermont has the ball. And um, so a three, they win the game. A two, they tie the game. A miss, they lose the game. Uh, so anyway, I'm not a commentator, but uh, oh no, now they're doing a replay. They're looking. Maybe they're going to decide who the ball was out on and if maybe if he was fouled or something. I'm not sure. So anyway, back to football. And so Caleb Williams went in. The season kind of started to turn around. Um, they didn't do super great, uh, but they did better with Caleb Williams. And so we got. So I became a fan. I became an OU fan. I thought, you know, I thought, you know what, I can root for OU and OSU at the same time and I you know I was I kind of like Lincoln Riley and I I liked the people in the stands and and I liked the players on the team and and I thought you know what I'm just gonna like all three schools and so that's where the title of this episode Woo Pig Sooners Cowboy comes from and because I'm now a fan probably a lifelong fan of all three schools even when my girls graduate and leave I can still see my wife and I driving to Fayetteville to see an Arkansas game every once in a while. I know we will be back in Norman uh, watching Oklahoma uh, football games, and every now and then we will probably hit OSU. So what's about to happen is, within the next couple of years, is OU is packing their bags conference-wise, and they're going to go to the SEC. Uh, Unfortunately, my daughters will both, I believe, be out of college by then and will not get to palm against each other. Although they did get to palm, they did play OU and Arkansas did play each other in one of the first basketball games this season uh, on a neutral basketball court in Tulsa. And weirdly enough, OU beat Arkansas, but now Arkansas is in the tournament a four seed and OU didn't even make the tournament. So kind of a weird thing there. Um, let me see who they gave the ball to. I think they gave it to Arkansas, uh, which is a good thing. They did give it to Arkansas. So nine seconds left. Arkansas is up by two. They are at the far end of the court. They've got to get the ball in uh, and do something. They're probably going to get fouled. We'll see who gets fouled. Uh, I think somebody may have called a timeout. I'm not sure what they're doing. So anyway, So, uh, I can legitimately say I am now uh, a Sooner fan, a Razorback fan, and a Cowboy fan. And on the back of my Jeep, I do have the the Razorback logo, the the, uh, Razorback head, and then under it, it says Boomer Sooner. Uh, And so, and I don't have my uh, Pistol Pete, which I will get uh, Pistol Pistol Pete on my Jeep so I can uh, show support for all three schools. But um, so anyway, that is kind of the story of our daughters going to different universities of me. That's how I became an Arkansas and an OU fan. If you don't know much about um, Arkansas and Oklahoma State, it's kind of cool in the fact that uh, back, and I don't, I, I'm probably not going to remember the exact year, maybe 1965, Arkansas won the national championship in football. And on that team were guys like Jerry Jones, Jimmy Johnson, um, um, Jones, the other Jones guy. Why can't I remember his name? Um, And an assistant coach for the team was a guy named Barry Switzer. And there was Art Broyles, I believe, was the coach. And um, so uh, Arkansas scored. They're up 75-71. They got the ball. We're about to run out of time. Arkansas just won the game. Yeehaw! So Arkansas moves on. Okay, so sorry. I was uh, preoccupied with that. Um, Okay, so what was really cool is a lot of these Arkansas guys, you know, Barry Switzer, assistant coach at Arkansas when they won the national championship, they kind of headed off to OU and OSU. Some of them, Jimmy Johnson and 
why can't I think of his name? Jones, uh, Pat Jones, Pat Jones. They ended up coaching and being at OSU, whereas Barry Switzer ended up being at OU. Jerry Jones ended up at the Dallas Cowboys, but they all were teammates at Arkansas. And then there was another guy um, um, named, uh, why did I just forget his name? Last name of Gilbo that was on the team two year, I believe two years prior to the national championship, but he played with those guys. He, he was just older. And Barry Switzer, he, he, he was living in, the uh, Gilbo was living in Arkansas and I, I believe had lost his job. And so Barry Switzer got him a job in Enid, Oklahoma. So they moved to Enid and their son, Jason Gilbo, became one of my best friends and part of our little gang that ran around together on West Broadway in the 70s. And so they always had Barry Switzer stuff and Barry Switzer coming to see them back in the day. And so it's kind of cool how there's all these Switzer, Arkansas, OU, OSU connections um, you know, along the way. So it's been really fun. Uh, again, uh, here watching basketball, um, you know, Arkansas is the only team out of the three that's got a chance. So I'm rooting the Razorbacks on to win the national championship. But uh, so, so then as you, if you're a sports fan at all, you know that the OU season ended really bad with Lincoln Riley at the last minute. Okay, so real quick, sorry. So we get to the end of the season and it gets down to Bedlam. And OSU's doing pretty good. OU's doing pretty good, and basically whoever wins the Bedlam game goes on to the Big 12 championship against Baylor, and the winner of that stood a very good chance of going on to a BCS bowl game and playing for the national championship. And so at that point, I basically said, look, whoever has the best chance of winning a national championship um, I'm going to root for. And the way that it looked, it looked like OSU had the best chance of winning Bedlam, winning the Big 12 title, and going on and playing for the BCS title. So uh, Bedlam came, and it was one of the best Bedlam games. It was in Stillwater. Uh, paid a very large amount of money for a ticket for my palm daughter to go. She wasn't palming that game. Uh, they don't uh, take the full squads when they go out of town. And then the older girls usually get to palm at the out-of-town games anyway. But anyway, so they, uh, so she was at the game. Of course, I watched it in one room. My wife watched it somewhere else. Um, and OU, OSU squeaked out a win and went on to play Baylor in the Big 12 title game. And then that game was back and forth, and it came down to that dang last play where the OSU running back just missed putting the ball over the, the, long, the touchdown by inches, and they ended up losing the game, which basically knocked them out of contention for the national title. I mean, if OSU was ever going to have a chance at a national title, that was probably their best chance and could be their best chance in a long time. They would have to basically run the numbers on the Big 12 again next year, go undefeated to even stand a chance. Um, and so anyway, we'll see what happens next year. So next year, okay, okay so then that happened. Uh, um, OU goes on, loses the Bedlam game, and Lincoln Riley resigns and goes to USC. So being all a new newbie OU fan, I'm like, what just happened? And so I got caught up in the whole, what is Lincoln Riley doing? He's he's you know shunned now by OU fans. You know um, he's no longer part of the OU history. And then all of a sudden, you, then you start hearing the rumors. You know, then Caleb. Well, then we knew Spentler, or Spencer Rattler was going to go to into the portal because he wasn't getting to play and he needs to be. The, the number one quarterback at a school. So he goes into the portal, but then Caleb William goes into the portal. And, um, and then it's like, okay, what's OU gonna do for a coach? And then there was a whole coaching search. And man, if you follow sports on Twitter, it's crazy. If, if you ever wonder what to use Twitter for, follow all of the Twitter accounts 
that are connected to your sports team and you will have the best time of your life. And so, so basically following a lot of the OU and Arkansas Twitter accounts, uh, you know, it, it was just a crazy time. It was, it was really kind of a fun time to be an OU fan, an OU Sooner fan, but not having my whole life invested in it, um, but being able to kind of look from the outside. So anyway, so they hired um, uh, Venables, uh, who was a prior defensive coach at OU and had left, and then he was the defensive coordinator at uh, that uh, school that won the national championships. Um, you know, being 59, my memory is gone. I'll think about it. Think of it anyway. Um, so they got him back. So so this is going to be a so there's so much to look forward to in this next football season. So we've got uh, OSU. They got their quarterback back. He came back. They've lost a lot of players, but we'll see what happens. So, got to watch and see how OSU does um, this year. And then Arkansas has got a lot of players. Even some of the OU players that went into the portal transferred to Arkansas. So, next year, we're going to get to see some of the players that we saw at OU playing at Arkansas, which is going to be really cool. Um, Arkansas has got their quarterback coming back. Um, they've got a, they, now they did lose some of their you know really good players, receivers to the NFL. But just looking at the recruiting, I think Arkansas is going to have a really great team in football this year. And then you've got to look at the OU team. So what's first-year coach Brent Venables going to do? And who's the quarterback? And how good is he going to be? And the running back? And, and so it's going to be a fun, fun season watching OU. And as now an OU fan, you really want OU to do really well to prove Lincoln Riley wrong for leaving the school and Caleb Williams wrong for transferring away. Well, Caleb finally ends up at USC, which look, I don't blame you. He's from California and he did go to OU to play for Lincoln Riley. So it just stands to reason that he's going to follow the coach that he came to play for back to USC. So I don't no ill will or anything. And I don't think the OU fans have any ill will towards Kayla Williams. Um, they do towards Lincoln Riley, I have to say. Um, so, but that's another school that's going to be fun to watch is we get to watch USC the next couple of years because the, the OU fan base wants USC to do really, really bad in the next couple of years. And they definitely don't want them ever to win a national title under Lincoln Riley. And so, um, so this first year after all of this mess is going to be great uh, as far as uh, watching college football. And, you know, it's not so much just rooting for your team. It's just all these other dynamics of, and uh, just on a personal side, not trying to get too much into sports. This is definitely not a sports podcast, but uh, uh, somebody needs to stop this whole portal thing. Uh, these kids jumping teams, um, you know, one, it, it's, it's, turn, it's starting to look like professional sports where, you know, um, these guys on the NBA are on three or four teams all in one season. It's just, and that's why I don't watch professional sports anymore because there's no cohesiveness. There's no team. It's all you're rooting for is a logo. The, the, the coach jumps around, the players jump around. So, you, you know, back in my day when I watched professional sports, there was like the Dallas Cowboys and there was Tom Landry and there was Tony Dorsett and there was Roger Staubach and they were on the team forever and it was the same team and the same players year after year after year after year and they were playing the Steelers and the same players and the Boston Celtics against the Lakers and it was always Bird against uh, Magic Johnson. Now, it's players against players, but they're on different teams. They're, you know, LeBron's on this team, then he's on that team, then Kevin Durant's on this team, and he's on that team, and then this team, and then that team. And so it just is no fun watching. It's no fun for me watching professional sports anymore. There's just no loyalty. Um, you know, 75% of the players, there's no loyalty anymore. It's, it's just all about the buck. And I'm afraid that's what this uh, portal is doing. So if you didn't know, Back before what they call this portal, if a student wanted a, a student athlete wanted to transfer from one college to another, they had to sit out the the year that they the next year that they transferred. So you could if you were like a quarterback at OU and you transferred to USC, you could not be their quarterback the next year. You had to wait a whole year and then be the quarterback 
that following year. And so that kept a lot of kids from jumping from one college team to the other because they didn't want to have to sit out a year. Well, then they came up with this portal thing, and now they've come up with this NIL thing where they, they're paying the college players, which I don't have any problem with, but what's happening is these colleges and these um, donors are enticing these players to go into the portal to come play for other college teams because they're going to get paid lots more money for endorsements and stuff. And and so it's just, I, I don't think it's a good idea, and I think it's starting to ruin uh, the college sport. Um, and, and it's not just football. They're doing it in basketball and, and everything also. So anyway, there's my two cents on uh, the college uh, uh, portal. But anyway, so I will eventually post this podcast on curtistucker.com. I'll have some pictures of my daughters in their palm outfits. Um, the cool, really cool thing about being a Arkansas Razorback fan and an Oklahoma Sooner fan at the same time is they're both dark red. And so I can buy clothing that is red with no logos on it and wear it to either school and nobody knows. Now, I uh, can't wear it to OSU since they're kind of a bright orange, but uh, it's been pretty fun uh, right now. Let's see, I've got on. And so my girls are in sorority, so I've got on my Theta dad hat. So oldest daughter is a Theta at OU and youngest daughter is a Kappa at uh, Arkansas. And so I'm looking, really looking forward to this next season. Again, uh, it's going to be fun driving back <clears throat> and forth between Fayetteville and Norman, watching the football games. Hopefully there'll be another weekend where we are able to squeeze in uh, two games in one day. That'll be fun. And then um, I've added a plot twist uh, to this year, which was one of the excuses that we had not gotten a pet um, have gone petless for 11 years, but I broke that rule and got the family a, a puppy. And so we're trying to work out logistics of what to do with the puppy uh, in the upcoming football season. I think the answer is going to be to take him with us and find a pet sitter in Fayetteville and one in Norman. When we get there, we'll drop him off. We can go see him if we need to, and then we pick him up when we're done and drive him back to Enid, and that way we're not rushed, uh, you know, that we have to get back to Enid at a certain time to get him out of jail, and so at the at the vet or whatever. So anyway, um, I'll, so, so what's cool is um, I didn't really start this journal part of this podcast until after the football season, and so it'll be fun. Uh, you know, there'll be some episodes where maybe, maybe the day that we do uh, you know, two games in one day, maybe I'll podcast, uh, do some live podcasts that day or something. But anyway, um, thank you guys so much for following along. Again, um, I just want this podcast to be about, you know, what's going on in Midwest uh, America? What happens in Oklahoma? Um, you know, what does a guy that's an entrepreneur do uh, from Northwest Oklahoma? What are, what are the, so there's, there's going to be a podcast episode where I just, I just drive around and talk about Enid, Oklahoma, what it's like to live here, um, you know, maybe highlight some places in town. But, but the whole point of the podcast is I want to connect with other people. And so please, if you're out there and you're listening, and I know, uh, you know, there are a lot of you listening um, especially if you're not from Enid, if you're from out of state, please email me shags at shaggyduck.com. Tell me what you're up to. Um, you know, tell me some story that you've got so I can follow and I can tell everybody else and then we can kind of follow different stories throughout the years. Um, you know, on my Enid Buzz business, uh, I've had people that are just regular commenters and so I knew I kind of be I, without knowing them, I began to know them, and then sometimes they would disappear, and I'm always, I always wonder, you know, whatever happened to that person that would comment literally, you know, three or four times a day, and they disappear. But but it's always fun to kind of have this cast of characters, and because this is a podcast that I'm just doing by myself, um, you know, eventually I'll have more guests here and there, uh, like I had my long lost cousin, and maybe I'll have my long lost uh, half sisters on eventually or my real sister or my best friends or or you know business partners or, or things like that but I think it would be fun to add 
to this podcast a cast of characters of fellow listeners and especially if there's some of you out there that have your own podcast. So if somebody out there has their own kind of journal type podcast like mine, um, let me know and I will share that with my listeners and then we can maybe kind of keep up with each other and uh, that will be one of the one of the lines, storylines that, uh, that I'll keep up with. So anyway, again, I thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening to this podcast. I hope I didn't bore you. There will not be very many podcasts about sports. Um, it's just an interesting story. It's fun. There's not a whole lot of parents that, now there are probably some parents that have, you know, sons that, that play on different football teams, but uh, probably not a whole lot of parents out there that have um, girls on Division One, you know, two different Division One football teams, and so um, anyway, I'm going to get out of here. I appreciate you guys listening, and we'll uh, we'll talk to you soon. My daughter's wanting to come out and get my puppy dog, and so I've got to answer her, and I got to wake him up here in a sec. So anyway, so uh, you guys have a great day, and I will talk to you soon. <laughs>